So I've just been doing all things ions and ionic formulae with my year 12 A-level chemistry students. So I thought I'd do a quick video on how you work out the formula for ionic compounds. So ionic compounds contain positive ions, call them cations, and negative ions, which we call anions. And basically what we need to make sure is that there's no overall charge in the compound. And we do that by multiplying ions out. Okay, so the ratio works for no overall charge. Right, so first one, sodium oxide. So we need to know which ions are present in sodium oxide. So we've got the sodium ion, which is Na+, and we've got the oxide ion, which is O2-. So you can see, if we just had one of each of those, we'd still be left with some negative charge because 1 plus doesn't match 2 minus. It's not equal and opposite. So what we do is we need two of those for every one of those. So how do we express that in the formula? We write Na2, little 2 there, and then 1 O. So that would work because you'd have 2 plus and 2 minus. So that's the formula for sodium oxide. Magnesium sulfide now. So I've deliberately used sulfide, for example, 2, and sulfate, for example, 3, just to make the point of what's the difference between them. So magnesium sulfide contains the magnesium ion, which is Mg2+, and the sulfide ion is just the ion of sulfur. So sulfur's in group 6, it's going to gain 2 electrons and become 2 minus, so S2 minus. So you can see that just one of each of those would actually work, there'd be no overall charge, so the formula is MgS. Okay, so the next one is aluminium sulfate. So the ions present, aluminium is 3 plus, and the sulfate ion is, it's a polyatomic ion, SO4, with a 2 minus charge. Right, okay, so what I say to my students is, if it's polyatomic, just think of it as one thing. Just like that was one thing, that was one thing. Think of the sulfate ion, even though it contains more than one atom, just think of it as one thing. Right, so 3 plus, 2 minus. How are we going to get them to be equal and opposite? Well, we'll get them up to 6. So if we, get, if we multiply this by 2, we'll get 6 plus. And to get this up to 6 minus, we need 3 of those. So what we're going to do in the formula is put that in a bracket. So four in the bracket, and then we need three of them. So we'll put a little three outside the bracket. So the formula is Al2SO4 three times. Another example where you've got sort of very similar sounding things, just to make a point of what's the difference between the two. So we've got nitride and nitrate here. So calcium nitride contains the calcium ion, so that's just Ca2+. Nitrogen is in group 5, so it's going to gain 3 electrons and become 3 minus. So N3 minus is the ion. So we need to get them up to 6 again, 2 plus 3 minus. So we need 3 of those because 3 times 2 is 6. So Ca3 and the nitride needs to be multiplied by 2 to get it up to 6 minus. So it'll be Ca3N2. Iron 3 nitrate now. So this Roman 3 here is telling us that we've got Fe3+. Plus. Transition elements have got a special property where they can form more than one type of ion. You'll study that later on in your um, chemistry A level. But anyway, that Roman 3 just means 3 plus. The nitrate ion is another polyatomic NO3 with a 1 minus charge. So again, we're going to think of that as just a single thing. So we just need to get that up to 3 minus, so it'll match that. So the formula would be Fe NO3 in brackets three times. So the last two are just um, hydroxides. So ammonium hydroxide, so the ammonium ion is NH4 with a 1 plus charge, and hydroxide is OH minus. So you can see we just need one of each because we've got 1 plus and 1 minus. So that's a nice easy one. NH4 
OH. And then the final one is magnesium hydroxide. Well, we've already had the magnesium ion, Mg2+. And we've got the hydroxide ion, OH-. So again, think of that as one thing, Mg, OH twice. So hopefully that was helpful. If you want me to do another type of video, just let me know. Cheers. Bye.